Hi, everyone. I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes and just make sure everyone else gets online and then we will get started. Hi everyone, thank you so much for attending our virtual info session uh, about our minute taking opportunities. Um, so we're going to get started. I know there might be a few people that still have yet to log on, but we'll get started anyway. Um, just want to mention at the beginning, um, if you experience any technical issues or you end up having to leave the session early for some reason, feel free to send me an email. My email is on the screen right now, uh, and I'd be happy to give you a summary of everything that I discuss today. As you can see, my name is Christine, and I'm a recruiter for Minute Solutions. Uh, most of my role is focused on recruitment of minute takers. So I get lots of questions um, about the role, lots of applications for these positions. So we thought it would be, you know, just a fun and different idea to do this kind of live virtual info session for some of you that are curious about what this role is all about. So today I will be talking about the specifics of the role. Um, I'll walk you through kind of what a typical meeting looks like for a minute taker. I'll go through our hiring process as well. But to get started, I will talk a little bit about our company. So Minute Solutions was founded in 2014 by Noah Maislin and Marco Linde. Noah is our CEO and Marco is our VP of Sales and Marketing. We are a fast growing professional minute taking company based out of Toronto. Uh, we specialize in taking formal meeting minutes for a variety of industries and organizations. So including corporations, condominium boards, associations, unions, and nonprofits. Our team uh, is very special. We have a very strong support team made up of a very diligent editorial team a detailed and thorough operations team and a strong leadership team, of course. Uh, we have roughly 100 minute takers, most of whom are located in the greater Toronto area. So we have quite a large team. Uh, our minute takers come from a variety of backgrounds. So um, some of them are writers, communications professionals, 
retirees, parents, executive assistants, entrepreneurs, journalists, lawyers, law clerks, the list goes on and on. Um, but a lot of you might be wondering, you know, what is this job all about? What exactly does a minute taker do? So I'll, I'll hopefully answer some of those questions right now. Um, all of our minute takers are independent contractors and work predominantly in the greater Toronto area. We do have a small cohort of minute takers in the Ottawa area, but currently we are just hiring in the GTA. Meetings are offered based on each minute taker's specific availability and their location. So we typically do not schedule meetings outside of a 15 to 20 kilometer radius of where an, an minute taker lives. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, once scheduled, minute takers uh, obviously attend the meeting and they take all of their notes during the meeting, after which they prepare their minutes and send their finalized minutes to our editorial team. So let me break this down a little bit more for you into sort of what a typical meeting timeline would look like. So before a scheduled meeting, our minute takers receive all the details they need for the meeting. So that includes the address, the contact information, sort of for the main point of contact, who they'll be meeting, um, parking instructions if there are any, the previous minutes for that client, uh, along with the agenda and any other reports that are going to be discussed or reviewed at the meeting. Uh, and it is the minute taker's responsibility to review all of those items before the meeting so that they are as prepared as possible. On the day of the meeting, Minute takers arrive 15 minutes before the start of the meeting. This ensures that they have time to obviously meet their point of contact, ask any questions that they may have, uh, and then also get set up in the room. During the meeting, a minute taker is essentially a fly on the wall. You know, they're following the discussions attentively for the entire meeting, whether it's a 20 minute meeting or a four hour meeting, uh, and typing all of their notes of the discussions. Our minutes are not typically a verbatim transcript, but rather a general overview of the salient points of the meeting. After the meeting, minute takers spend about an hour to an hour and a half at home turning their notes into a professional set of minutes, ensuring formatting, accuracy, consistency, and writing is professional and follows our guidelines. Uh, and then they submit those minutes to our editorial team within 48 hours. So that's kind of the typical meeting timeline. Um, why this job and why do people love this job? So we have minute takers who have been working with us for several years now. Um, and of course they're with us because they enjoy it so much. So some of the main reasons why they enjoy it, I would say is that um, it is flexible. So you aren't tied to a specific schedule. Um, our operations team sends meeting times and locations and then minute takers have the opportunity to accept or not. Uh, and of course, you know, I have to mention our amazing support team again. Um, our editorial team, they're super thorough, as I mentioned before, they provide very detailed and constructive feedback. It's very specific to each, each minute taker on every set of minutes that they submit. Um, so it really gives our minute takers an opportunity to learn and grow from, from that feedback. Our operations team, they're very helpful and they really try to set all minute takers up for success um, with every meeting that they attend. Uh, and then our leaders, Noah and Marco, um, they're very approachable, they are honest, um, and they're very open to suggestions and feedback, which is just really, really nice. Um, I always talk about variety with this role as well. Um, if you saw our job posting, it's one of the things that we highlight. Um, and it's, it's really just because no meeting really is ever the same. Uh, we do have about 75%, I would say, of our clients are condominium boards. Um, the remaining 25% are a mix of different organizations from unions, insurance companies, nonprofits, law firms, et cetera. Um, but even in going to a lot of condominium boards, um, still no meeting is ever the same and no, no board is really ever the same. They're all very unique. Uh, and then finally, unlike other freelance roles for independent contractors, our roles are long-term. There are no end dates on our contracts. We are specifically looking for people who are interested in working with us for well over one year. 
All right, now on to the good stuff, um, our hiring process. So I'm going to walk you through every phase of our process and tell you exactly what we are looking for in each phase. Um, and obviously the very first step is submitting your resume and cover letter. So we receive approximately somewhere in the range of 130 to 160 plus applications each week. Um, and we only shortlist a small number of those. Um, so what we're looking for is a well-formatted and organized resume with no formatting or grammatical issues, um, as well as some relevant experience to this role. Uh, it doesn't have to specifically be minute taking, uh, but some kind of writing experience um, or professional writing experience or board experience, something along those lines. Uh, we're also looking for a well-written cover letter specific to this position, explaining why you're a good fit for this role. Uh, we really are looking in, in this sort of phase for candidates who are serious about the role um, and the, who have really put in effort into their application. Uh, and I should mention as well that we do shortlist at every phase of the process. So not everyone who's shortlisted initially will go through the entire process. Um, the next step in our process is um, we send a detailed job description and questionnaire where we collect information like candidates approximate location, their availability, uh, and how long they intend on holding a position with us. Uh, so we're looking for, of course, as I mentioned before, people who are looking for a long term opportunity. We're not looking for candidates who are looking for just a few months of work. Um, we're also looking at where approximately do people reside? Where are they located? Um, and are they in an area where we have clients? Um, that's a really important piece. Um, we're also looking at availability. Um, so do candidates have at least three evenings available each week between Monday and Thursday? That's, that's a big one just in terms of scheduling. Um, it doesn't mean you have to work that many uh, sh meetings each week. It just means um, it makes it easier for us when it comes to scheduling meetings if you have that many evenings available. Um, as well, throughout the entire process, we are looking for professional and well-written emails, questions, and comments. Uh, so not just in this questionnaire that we send, but also in all of your email communication uh, with us throughout the entire recruitment process. Um, the next step in our process, our candidates actually get to edit what we refer to as a bad set of minutes. So these are minutes um, with spelling, grammatical and formatting errors, as well as other inconsistencies. Now we aren't necessarily looking for perfection here, um, but we are looking for an excellent eye for detail. So catching most spelling errors, gra grammatical issues, um, formatting and other errors throughout the document on the first attempt. Um, we're looking for any knowledge or understanding of minute taking that's displayed through the changes or edits that a candidate makes. Uh, and then we're also looking at the ability to learn and follow guidelines um, quickly uh, with little direction. Uh, we do provide an assist sheet uh, with the bad minutes uh, that you can sort of learn from and work off of. So that's kind of what we're basing uh, that sort of ability to learn quickly on. Um, the next phase, uh, our candidates actually get to prepare their own set of minutes from an audio recorded meeting. So what we're looking for here is obviously strong and concise writing. Um, we're looking for accuracy. It's really, really important that all of the details from the meeting are captured correctly. Uh, and then the other big piece is the ability to complete the minutes well in a short amount of time. So given that this meeting is only 15 minutes long, it's important that candidates are able to complete the assignment fairly quickly. Next, we send candidates our detailed manual and a quiz to complete in order to ensure they have a good understanding of our expectations and our guidelines. Uh, we're looking for on that quiz, we're looking for a score of a minimum of 17 out of 20. Uh, the next step is a virtual interview, usually via Google Meet with me. Um, we look for a few things throughout the interview. Of course, we're looking for someone who's serious about the role. So uh, we're looking for candidates that are serious as well about the interview, who have prepared for the interview, interview and have clearly thought about why they're a good fit for the role. 
Uh, and then, of course, someone that's communicating clearly, directly, and professionally throughout the interview as well is also something that we look for. At this point, uh, after the interview, uh, we'll decide whether or not to extend an offer to a candidate. Uh, when a candidate is offered a position, they will do at least one to two shadow meetings where they shadow a senior minute taker at a meeting. Uh, the shadow meetings are kind of like a probationary period, so it's really important that our new hires take it seriously. Uh, it's a very important learning exercise. Um, because the minutes are submitted to our editorial manager, each of our new hires receives sort of very specific and detailed uh, feedback from her uh, to really help you before you go sort of onto your own solo meeting. Uh, so similar to the recruitment process, um, what we're looking for is that accuracy, attention to detail, strong, concise writing, all of the same things that we were looking for throughout the recruitment process, but this time for your real meetings where you're shadowing a senior minute taker. The purpose of the shadow meetings is to really make sure that you feel prepared to attend meetings on your own um, and be able to prepare a high quality set of minutes. So after the shadow meetings, we do ask all of our new minute takers to complete um, a condo director training, which is provided by the Condom Condominium Authority of Ontario. It's a free online and self-guided training that can be completed at your own pace and on your own time. So that's our process. Um, what does the job pay? So we pay a per project rate of $80 for new hires, and that's the rate for in-person meetings. Um, that's, that rate is for meetings that last anywhere from 15 minutes to three hours. So anything in that range, that would be the rate. That rate includes your prep, travel time, um, time spent at the meeting, of course, and any time that you spend preparing the minutes at home after. When a meeting goes over the three hour mark, minute takers earn an additional $10 for every 30 minutes rounded up. So as an example, if your meeting lasts three hours and 10 minutes, the base rate for that meeting would be $90. There are also um, bonuses available for minute takers who do three in-person meetings in a week or four in-person meetings in a week. Uh, and also for those who want to use our app to record meetings. Um, virtual and audio meeting rates are a bit less than the in-person meeting rates. They're usually between $60 to $70 per meeting for a new hire. So that's kind of all I had to discuss today. Um, I'll open it up for any questions if you have. Um, and what I'll say now is if you have questions that are very specific to you, or you just don't want to ask them here right now, um, you can always email me and I can answer any questions that you have. Um, I'll, I will show my email on the screen again, um, but I do have a few frequently asked questions, which I'll answer for everyone right now because I know these come up quite a bit. Um, so what precautions are you taking during COVID-19? A lot of people are asking, so I'll answer that for you right now. Um, all of our minute takers were working exclusively remotely from about mid-March to early July due to the pandemic, of course. We just returned to some in-person meetings on Monday, July 6th, um, but only for meetings that with 10 attendees or less. So that includes the minute taker as well. We also have a number of guidelines that our clients must follow for in-person meetings, which includes cleaning the room ahead of time and having hand sanitizer available at the meeting. And we are also ensuring that all of our minute takers are using any PPE that they feel necessary to feel safe when attending meetings. I'll also mention that it's not a requirement uh, of our minute takers to attend in-person meetings right now. Um, we are being very flexible um, based on what everyone's preferences are and what their comfort level is. Um, so we do expect everyone to return to in-person meetings at some point. I don't know when that will be, but when things are more um, normal, I'll say. Um, but as for right now, um, you know, if people don't feel comfortable attending in-person meetings, we are definitely not forcing them to do so. In what areas of the GTA are you currently hiring? That's a good question. So we aren't, uh, normally we would hire sort of from as far west as Brampton, as far north as Aurora, and as far 
east as Ajax, uh, and then of course everywhere in between. Um, the only area where we're really not hiring right now is downtown Toronto. Um, we just don't have as much work available and we have more minute takers um, than we need in that particular area. Otherwise, sort of everywhere outside of there in that little arc that you see on your screen, um, we are hiring in all of those areas. Um, how are minute takers scheduled is another question that we get a lot. And then, you know, what if my availability changes? Um, our operations team will, of course, as I mentioned, I mentioned this briefly before, but they will look at both your availability and your location before they offer you a meeting. So um, we do take into consideration uh, where people live before we offer them a meeting. So we, we try to stick to that 15 to 20 kilometer range uh, of where, uh, where you live. They'll also take into consideration, you know, if you've taken minutes for that particular client previously, or if you have any particular expertise, whether it's condo boards, unions, AGMs, and that kind of thing. Um, if your availability changes, you can update your availability with our operations team at any time, uh, but you still need to have at least three evenings available each week uh, and the ability to work more than four meetings a month. That's kind of what we expect from all of our minute takers. Uh, the last question that I have that's a sort of a frequently asked question um, is, does the time an editor spends on my minutes affect my rate? A lot of people ask that. So the amount of editing required does not affect your pay for your meeting negatively. However, it can affect the pay increase that you receive to your base rate after your first 10 meetings. Um, so it is something that you, you definitely want to keep in mind in terms of the quality that you, that you submit to us. Um, I don't see any questions that have popped up yet. So feel free. Um, if you would rather email me, um, you're welcome to email me at christine at minutesolutions.com, of course. I'd be happy to hear from any of you. Um, and then if you would like to follow our company pages on either Facebook and LinkedIn um, for updates or other hiring that we might be doing, feel free um, to let me know or to follow us. Um, I see someone is typing. Uh, so someone asked about the shadow meetings uh, and whether they are paid. So we pay a per diem for the shadow meetings. Uh, the first one is $30 and the second one is $20 or any subsequent meetings are $20, I should say. Um, someone asked, so out of the 130 to 160 applications you receive a week, how many are shortlisted and successfully hired? It's a really good question and it really depends on each individual week and each individual applicant. I would say we probably shortlist 10 to 15 uh, a week. Um, that would be sort of the, the max. Um, and then successfully hired usually less than that um, but it's hard to say it varies from from sort of week to week and it really depends on on the person what is the, this is a good question what is the process of validating the information that goes in during minute taking so i'm assuming that you mean um, sort of validating the information that you've recorded in your minutes that's what i'm that's how i'm going to interpret that question um, so there, there is no, uh, no validation process. It is really the responsibility of the minute taker to make sure that they are following the discussions well. Um, our editorial team is not editing for, um, you know, whether your information is accurate because they aren't at the meeting. So it's really up to the minute taker to ensure that they are extremely accurate. Um, with their minutes. Uh, our editorial team is looking at, and of course, the formatting, grammatical issues, um, and, and consistency and, and those kinds of things. But, you know, when it comes to specific numbers that are discussed in the meeting, those are things that they wouldn't know. And it's really up to the minute taker to be able to, to ensure that they are accurate. 
Uh, how does one apply? It's a great question. So you can send your resume and cover letter directly to me um, at christine at minutesolutions.com. Uh, we also have postings on LinkedIn right now, if you prefer to apply that way. We also have a posting on Indeed. Uh, and then of course you can apply through our website as well, if that's kind of your preference. Looks like I've got all the questions answered. Again, feel free to send me an email. Oh, somebody asked. Um, what happens if a client comes back unhappy with the minutes? Um, that's a good question as well. So we can make amendments to the minutes if, uh, if they're unhappy with something. Um, every client will have a customer info form. Um, so before you go to a meeting, you'll be able to see if they have any specific requirements. So for example, if they want very detailed minutes or if they don't want too much detail, um, you know, just other preferences that they may have with how their minutes are done. Um, so it's important to review that and, and to look at those previous minutes so that we hopefully avoid any clients coming back unhappy with the minutes. Um, of course, if there's something inaccurate in there, we would have to change it right away. Um, definitely amend it for the client. Um, but, you know, of course, we would definitely do that uh, as soon as possible for the client if that was an issue. Okay, now, how many open positions do you have now? So we don't have a particular number uh, of positions that we're hiring. We are really just looking for the right fit, um, people that are going to be able to, to sort of easily <laughs> ease their way into the role because it is a challenging position. Um, so we, we don't have a set number. This is another good question. So what is the typical um, words per minute for minute takers? Is any automated transcription permitted? So typical words per minute for minute takers, um, we don't have a standard. Um, we don't have a minimum requirement when it comes to your typing speed. But of course, you do need to be able to type fairly quickly or at least be able to follow the discussions um, very well and record your notes accurately. Uh, and of course, um, with your typing speed, um, the faster you are at typing, the faster or the less time you'll have to spend at home uh, editing your minutes, which is obviously important as well. So you do want to have a pretty good typing speed, but we do not have a, a minimum. Can I bring a laptop? Yes, so all of our minute takers must have their must use their own personal laptop. Um, and you would do all of your minutes on there and you would be typing your minutes. We prefer that all of our minute takers type their minutes at the meetings as opposed to writing them freehand. So there are options to audio record meetings um, along with recording your notes. Um, you do have to get permission from each individual client. You just have to make sure that they are okay with you audio recording the meeting. Um, so as long as you check with the client, that is usually not an issue. And as I said, we do have an app um, that is in beta testing right now that a lot of our minute takers are using. So if you um, do end up joining our team, um, you would have the opportunity to use that app for audio recording meetings as well. Just wait one more second, just to see if any other questions come up. Right. I don't see any more. So as I said before, feel free to send me an email if I've, if I've missed any questions um, or if there's anything specific um, that you want me to answer. Um, thank you all so much for attending our session today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. All right. Bye everybody.